I am sorry for all the fiction readers watching this video that are zero fiction books in this right here, right now. I don't need you to come up with another creative idea. You need to get actionable advice to drive your business forward to make real money and real profit, and that's what we're gonna talk about. All the time I get asked, what would I recommend for clothing store owners to grow online profitably? And what I can tell you is that those who are clients and program store owners, who read more make significantly more money than those who don't. But one thing that does matter that isn't talked about enough is exactly what you should be reading. So book number one is Never Eat Alone. I read this book right out of college and it was fantastic because I moved to a new city where I knew no one at all my age or really just anybody. This book's overarching lesson is continue to network and that's the person you're pumping gas with, the person you're sitting in line with at the airport. It could change your life. Be curious and constantly be focusing on how you can add value to conversations and other people. Being around the right people will help you level up and it's not who you know or what you know, but who actually knows you. All right, so book number two here is Atomic Habits. Micro habits done over time to get consistent results. This book can literally change your life if you apply it. Habits are what mold us and give us the flexibility that we need to execute inside of our businesses and life. Clothing store owners who are not structured are going to have a much harder time growing than those who are. Book number three, I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. So quite literally one of the best books about money out there. This is a book that actually started me on my path to starting this company right here. Learning the ins and outs of finances is what will allow you to make the right decisions for your business and to put you in a healthy perspective, healthy position. Ramit's perspective is to spend extravagantly on the things that you love and cut mercifully for the areas that you do not care about as much. Think about this for when you're going to go do photo shoots, ordering products, or even advertising. The reason you should be thinking about that is, should I spend more money on advertising? Do the photo shoots matter? Do I, can I use an iPhone? Should I hire a photographer? Should I spend more money on the quality of the products? Those are all decisions that I can't make for you, but you should make for yourself. And when you are learning about money, you can decide whether or not you want to spend extravagantly on certain areas of your business. And this will help you prioritize where to spend that money and then to cut on all the other things that do not matter. So highly suggest that book. Book number four is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This is a book that I feel is one that is on everyone's shelf, one that you've probably heard of, maybe you've already read a couple of pages because somebody has already recommended it. But for clothing store owners, it's about the mental flip of the switch and getting out of the rut of what was taught to us all throughout school. Let's relearn, right? The old school way of thinking about money that worked in the 20th century does not work right now. Break the system and move into a mindset of abundance in pursuing your dreams. Scarcity with money makes you operate in a very different way and is not conducive to helping your business grow you have to operate in an abundance mindset. When it's scarcity, everybody is out to get you. There's not enough pieces of the pie. There's not enough money to go around. And when you operate in that way, you operate in a, in a stage of fear, your brain literally changes and operates differently because you're operating in a, in a space of fear. This book will help you to operate in a way which will help you make decisions that are better for the long term of the business versus an anecdotal piece of just a very small fraction of time. All right, so book number five right here is The Lean Startup. This book is for anyone just starting out or trying to recreate the structure in the business. For clothing store owners, this book will teach you how to create products your customers actually want and not waste time on ordering ones that will not move out of inventory. And what I mean by that is, it will let you test, it will let you experiment for the products before you completely deliver on them. Think of it as like a pre-sell or uh, think about it as a pre-order, whatever that may be. This book is a tech book and it is not in the clothing space, but I believe that you should read books that are outside of your space to learn more things. And this is a really good example of how tech products are thrown into the market you should be operating at the same level of detail, not going out and buying a bunch of blanks and putting some logos on there before you actually make money. Your number one goal in business is to make money. And so this will allow you, this book will give you the tools that you need to go out and experiment to see if your products are actually gonna make money before you spend money. I want you to make money before you spend that. I read this book in early 2013 in my like early stage startup uh, stage and it really helped me a lot and I know it will for you. Okay, so number six is story brand. For clothing store owners, I cannot express enough how powerful story is 
for your business. Story brand is the framework to tell stories through your brand and is what will get others to stop scrolling on social media, to look at your content, to head into your website and pay for your products. Story is the single most important aspect of your marketing. If you get this right and get most other things wrong, you can still be successful. I remember listening to this audiobook for the first time after phys reading the physical, physical book, and it was the at that moment that I realized how simple of a concept this was to implement, but yet I was missing the mark. This concept of story is still something I'm working on today. It's how do you invite people in to something that you're thinking where there is a actual problem that has a resolution and you invite people into that. If you can get people to be captivated with a story, just like Story Brand here, this is one of those books where you'll literally like be taking notes, you'll be literally highlighting, what do they call it, dog ears. You go back to this book a lot. And honestly, I don't know if it's my favorite book out of these 10, but it is one of my top ones because if you implement that one and that one alone, it will help you grow your business because like I said, story matters so much. It's literally ingrained into us, it's, it's primal. If you're a clothing store owner and want the insight into your story and a roadmap to generating the revenue you need to grow your clothing store and take it to that next level, I would highly suggest for you to schedule a 45 minute strategy session. It is absolutely free. All you have to do is click the link in the description down below. We are real people and so, uh, so many people don't understand this, but we do have limited spots. So check it out in the description down below. All right, so number seven is unreal reasonable hospitality. I'm trying to give you all books that I have stood the test of time for at least a few years since I've read them and have been in, at this point, I've already implemented them. But this book is the only exception in this list. Business and growing your clothing store is really about doing the unimaginable to make your customers happy. When they feel happy because of a great product and service that you're providing to them through your clothes, they come back and they tell their friends. Organic word of mouth and happy customers is the single biggest way and best way for you to blow up your store. This book is about the restaurant industry. Don't get me wrong, it's not about clothing, but it is one that you can mimic and do it easily, especially in this clothing space. The pursuit of being number one, and I say this a lot, but I believe it is worth saying again, y'all should be striving to be number one at something. Micro niches make this possible. For example, you could be, I know that's super niche, but imagine being number one. If you're number one at something, you beat out all the competition. It's very lonely at the top, and I want you to be lonely at the top. Not really lonely. I want you to be at the top, all right? You can hang out with other micro niche people who are number one in their space too, but focus on being that number one. Number eight is the four hour work week. So my wife, Brianna, bought me this book my senior year in college. How she knew I would enjoy it or the way I enjoyed it at the time was honestly impressive for many reasons. The title of this book is very misleading for most as they try to hire virtual assistants and just travel the world forever and just think that they only need to work four hours a week to make a million dollars. But what I got out of it is that you should be working on your zone of genius and you do have affordable options for people to help you through the mundane tasks that are not your zone of genius. So in the book, Tim Ferriss, he talks a lot about the systems and creating the right systems for your clothing store will help put you light years ahead of the competition. Creating a system for ordering products or for going to market, a system for returns, a system for marketing, anything can be systematized and efficiency is your business's absolute love language. Number nine here, that's number nine. Number nine, how to win friends and influence people. Do you guys wanna be my friend? I think you look amazing right now. Thank you so much for watching this video. You are awesome. Everyone can teach you something, literally anybody. Hopefully I'm teaching you something here. I, I hope you are finding some value here. I remember reading this for the first time and thinking this seems manipulative and almost like a cheat code with business and with life. But I will tell you, it's not manipulative if you work on the actions taught in the book with the right intentions. Intentionality matters so much because there's a lot of things that can be done for good and for evil, and it's your choice to do them for the good, right? I assume at this point you're watching this type of video, you're, you're a good person, but this book taught me to always be seeking what's in it for them. You, on the other side of this, what can I be creating that's gonna add value to you? The other person on the other side of the screen or in front of me, if we put the customer first, you guys first, our vendors first, our business relationship first, and truly seek to add value to them, we will all win. With your closing store, if you have an angry customer, remember they are likely angry because they feel unheard. Most of the time, people just need to be heard. Listen and provide solutions based off of what they are telling you, and I promise you, 
it will absolutely change the way that you interact with people and people within your business and how your business grows. All right, so number 10 here, and I left the best for last, or at least my favorite book right now, is Relentless. This is the guy behind the greatest athletes and business owners in the world. Tim Grover is the guy who worked in silence for 30 years to allow us all to witness the greatness that as is was Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, and so many more. What he did revolutionized the sports industry. They're doing things today in sports that Tim Grover came up with because he thought of it himself and was like, hmm, this, I just know this is right. He just knew in his head that it was right. There was no books to read. He gives an example whenever he was training Michael, there was no Fitbit, there was no uh, ways to track anything. So what he would do is after filming the game and after Michael went back and, and the next day they were gonna go train, what Tim would do is watch the video and he would look at how many steps that Michael took on his left foot, how many steps he took on his right foot, how many times he jumped off his left, how many times he jumped off his right, how many times he put his arm up to the right, how many times he put his arm up to the left. And based off of the balance of what he was doing, he'd work different exercises. So 60% of the time, if he was using his left, he would use, uh, in the games, he would use less weight. And so his right arm actually carried more weight during the workouts for the next day because they needed to be strengthened and have better endurance differently. So we literally looked at the key details of the athlete. Another example he gave, and I, I think this one is just, again, amazing, and it, it speaks to the, to the dedication of these people and their, their ability to go to the next level. So gyms for the basketball, for basketball, for those who don't know, are always brought into an arena. So they're just put together for the game. It's not like it's just, it's always there. There's, there's not really, that's not really the case in the NBA. So what happens is, there's different spots of the wood that are dead spots, which means that it's gonna bounce less. So what Tim and Kobe would go and do is they would walk the whole gym and bounce and they'd figure out where dead spots were at. And what they would do is Kobe would avoid those spots so he didn't have a disadvantage. And then whenever he was on defense, he would force people into those spots because he knew that he had an advantage. This is the type of person that achieves and is focused on absolute excellence. His book is about the pursuit of greatness and the obsession it takes to be the absolute best. As an entrepreneur, you have to be so bought in, so dedicated and eager to make this journey happen that you will do anything. He gives a lots of examples that are really hard to hear. One story that resonated with me because I have a daughter as well is one that I think a lot of people would look poorly on Tim but you don't know the whole context of it. And so it's one of those ones where, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you, but it's the level of, of obsession that if you want to be the best in your space, you may have to do. So one time Tim was packing up in Chicago, getting ready to go take a plane. He's packing up all of his stuff and his daughter at five years old comes in there and says, hey dad, why, why do you have to go on this work trip? And he and Tim responded and said, well, because I have to provide for your mom, I have to provide for you, we gotta pay for school, we gotta put food on the table, we gotta make sure that you know there's there's things that we can contribute to and, and make sure that, again, you guys are, are fed at this point. Without skipping a beat, his daughter just asked him, He said, she said, dad, if I eat less, will you stay home? To me, that was like heartbreaking. What he said in an interview later, so this is in the book, and what he said in an interview later is that 10 years after this, he tried to sit down with his daughter to have a real conversation about what was happening. And she said, I already know, Dad. I already know why you had to do the things that you had to do. And it made her a better person to make better decisions. And a lot of you will probably hear this and say, I don't know if I would do that. And that's completely okay. But what I can tell you is that this book will challenge you in ways that you've never been challenged before to think in perspectives that you've never thought about before. And so I would highly, highly suggest this book because it's an absolute game changer from the business perspective. All right, so this is a different type of format for my videos. So I'd like to hear from y'all. Leave a comment below. If you liked this type of video and you want to see more of them, I really want to know um, because I want to make sure that to continue to add value to you. And if you are a clothing store owner and want to drive sales to your store through paid advertising, go watch this video on Facebook ads right here next. I'll see you guys next week. Have a great rest of your day. And oh, P.S. Make sure you subscribe.